We spend most of our lives in buildings. They contain basically everything we do. And yet the technology the buildings operate on is literally from the last century. But what if we had an AI trained in the laws of physics and we could give that AI system a digital representation of a building and have it run physics simulations to optimize how that building functions and then have that AI actually control the building so that it can learn and improve over time. This building optimization system already exists. It was created by Passive Logic, and in this video, we'll do an overview of it by covering the four pillars that make up their tech stack. I'm going to try to keep this video super high level so that you can grasp the big picture of how it works and why it's so groundbreaking. But in order to keep this video concise, I'm going to have to take some shortcuts and explain things in my own way. And then I'm going to have to leave a ton of info out. So if you're interested in a more detailed and precise overview, I've linked their website and their full length launch event in the description. Now let's break it down. The first of the four pillars we'll cover is quantum. Quantum does two things. First, it provides a unified platform for creating digital twins of buildings. And a digital twin in this case is exactly what it sounds like. You have the real building in the real world, and then you have a precise digital model that includes everything within the building, and that's the digital twin. And the second thing that quantum does is set a standardized way of describing everything within these digital twins. That way, everyone building in the industry has the same starting point and speaks the same language. So quantum is the foundation for digital twins, but it's not just about naming parts of a building. It's about understanding how they function based on physics. For example, it doesn't just label a light switch. It describes what a light does. It describes the electricity it uses, the heat it generates, and when and how to turn it on and off. This standardized approach extends to all devices within a building. And by grounding everything in the principles of physics, quantum provides the framework that enables a consistent starting point and a high level API for everyone building in the prop tech industry. And as the prop tech industry with smart buildings and the internet of things continues to grow, it will increasingly be built within this quantum digital twin framework. So to make things super simple, quantum is a framework for everyone in the industry to start on the same page so that the prop tech industry can join us in the 21st century. And now that we have this standardized framework, we need an AI that can run it. But the problem is, in order to have an AI powerful enough to do this in real time, it needs massive amounts of computing power. That's why they all run in the cloud. But in order to have an AI automatically operate a building, a few things need to happen. An AI that learns as it operates, doesn't hallucinate, makes custom models for each building, and runs computations from inside the building itself. And so that's what Passive Logic created. They created an AI that takes all of the information within the building, every material, every sensor, the time, the local weather, and compiles it into a custom model for that building. Their AI compiler is over 300 times faster than Google TensorFlow and over 200 times faster than PyTorch, the other leading framework. And part of how they're able to achieve this is by running code in reverse. So if you think about an AI running these simulations, traditionally, it would simulate billions or trillions of possible scenarios and then find that one that's the most optimized. But that's a wasteful approach. Instead, it starts with the end goal, maximum optimization, and then runs it in reverse back from the future point back to the current state. And that is just a complete game changer. This type of calculation that works in reverse is called abductive inference. And it's possible because the code is differentiable. That means the code not only runs forward as most programming languages do, but also in reverse. Swift is the programming language they use. And so their AI compiler is called differentiable Swift. So we have these digital twins in a standardized way of describing them through quantum. And we have an AI compiler called differentiable Swift capable of running the digital twins. But we haven't covered how humans interact with the system or how we set up the system. And that leads me to the third pillar, which is their ecosystem of software applications. Passive Logic's software ecosystem consists of six applications. Building Studio is for designing buildings. It has speech to architecture generative AI built in. It has site analysis, so you can properly consider where your building will be when you're designing it. And it can run simulations to optimize your building during the design stage. Autonomy Studio is a software that gets more into the nitty gritty of building automation. This is where you connect all the different sensor devices and fully design the autonomous system. It's built on the same digital twin technology and can train the digital twin on an existing system or build one from scratch. Quantum Lens is an app that you can use to scan a building and have it generate plans for you. 85% of buildings that are already built don't have architectural plans. So by walking around a room, this will map out the building and then turn that 3D model into working architectural plans. Quantum Explorer is where developers can build software for digital twins. It's a tool that they use to connect with the high level API for quantum 
and it opens the gate for new SaaS startups in prop tech, construction tech, and climate tech. This is super important for getting the smartest software teams in the world to join the industry, which has historically been too boring and outdated. Quantum Creator is the software for making digital twins at scale. It's a new type of CAD system for building and training digital twins. It breaks down the digital twin from the building to the equipment to the components within the equipment, and then allows you to build it out from there. And lastly is Quantum Passport. And a good way to think of this is that the digital twin of the building isn't only optimizing for efficiency, it's also gonna optimize for comfort. And Quantum Passport is the app where you can share whatever data about yourself that you'd like, including where you are in the building, what you're up to, and it will create a digital twin of you and optimize for your comfort. You choose what data you wanna share with it and it will plan accordingly. So we've covered the Quantum Digital Twins, the differentiable Swift AI compiler, and their software. Now it's time to look at the hardware that's actually installed in the building and how all of this combines to form generative autonomy. The first hardware we'll look at is the Hive platform. This is the control panel and brain of the automation system. It's an industrial grade touchscreen and computer where you can access the system. Passive Logic partnered with NVIDIA to add their Jetson Orin NX chip to this, which can do 100 trillion operations per second. This is where the AI compiler runs. And because all of this is done within the Hive itself, for larger buildings, you just add more hives. It allows it to scale from a home up to the largest skyscrapers in the world. They can be wired, but they also come with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth mesh so that they can be retrofitted to existing buildings without having to tear the walls apart. They say this brings the integration time down by 90% compared to existing solutions, actually more than 90%. It's just totally brilliant. And I can make a video just about the Hive, but we need to move on. The next hardware device is the Hive Mini, which doesn't have a touchscreen. It's more for boosting existing wireless connectivity and making installation more flexible. Then within the Hive or the Hive Mini are the cell modules. These are four different modular devices for input and output. It's how you connect the wiring for all the different devices in the building, and it controls and measures the devices that it's connected to. Then beyond the Hive, the Hive Mini, and the cell modules, Passive Logic also has two different hardware sensor devices. As you can imagine, the more sensors you have in a building, the more accurate the digital twin will be. Their platform does work with existing sensors out there, but to make the install faster and easier, they created the Sense Nano and the Sense Touch. The Nano has seven sensors in it that track air temperature, radiant temperature, humidity, air quality, light level, air pressure, and occupant location services. The Touch adds a fisheye thermal camera, motion detector, CO2 detection, and sound pressure, 11 sensors in one. They both have Bluetooth low energy built in and you scan them with the Quantum Lens app to activate them and add their precise locations to the digital twin. It's so cool. Okay. Now I know that that was a lot, but I wanted to mention everything so that you can at least grasp the scale of what they're building. The Quantum Digital Twins, the AI compiler, and all the hardware and software make up the four pillars. And when you combine all of them, you get something revolutionary, and that's generative autonomy. The easiest way to understand generative autonomy is to compare it to self-driving cars. And in that world, there are six levels of autonomy. Level zero is no autonomy, and then level five is complete autonomy. Right now, the highest level of self-driving cars on the streets is level two. They can steer and brake, or they can steer and accelerate at the same time, but the driver still needs to be hands-on. Level three is expected to come out next year, and that's where you could watch this video while the car does the work, but you still would need to be ready to take over if the car tells you to. Level four is full autonomy, but only in limited areas, like an airport shuttle that just does the same route. And then level five is the holy grail. This is, what, this is true autonomy, where your car can drive anywhere, no matter the conditions. These same levels of autonomy actually apply to buildings as well. But rather than moving from A to B through space, building automation moves from A to B through time. And Passive Logic system is already at level five autonomy for buildings. This means instead of manually controlling a thermostat or any other one-off control system, you have an intelligent system that learns how to control and optimize a building in real time. And this is far more complex than a self-driving car because a self-driving car controls steering, acceleration, and braking. But buildings are the most complex systems that humans make, and they can have hundreds of thousands of sensors and control points. Here's the thing. Tesla only needs to get their self-driving algorithm right once, and then they copy and paste the algorithm to all of their cars. 
But that doesn't work for buildings because every single building in the world is unique. Even if you have an apartment complex with a bunch of the same buildings, they have different people inside, they have different heat and energy requirements. That's why what Passive Logic has already accomplished is so incredible and why I think that we'll be hearing a lot more about them in the coming years. Now, if you're interested in learning more, check out the links in the description. And if you want to get involved, they have like 50 job postings right now because they're just scaling it at an extreme rate. I've talked with a few of the team members and from what I've gathered, they have the best work culture of any company I've seen. So go check them out and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching and take care.